January 2, 2015. Real Estate Capital Scoreboard January, 2015. Chicago, Illinois, January 2, 2015. As the middle of the decade starts, Treasury rates are drifting downward, with the benchmark 10 year Treasuries dropping nearly 20 basis points in December alone. In contrast to a year ago, five year Treasuries are slightly higher while 10 year notes dropped a half of the percent lower. The tightening yield curve usually indicates an economic slowdown, such signs are hardly evident as the domestic economy. However, the impact of the overall global health becomes more impactful on the United States each year. Most economists are perplexed about rate movements, especially those predicting higher interest rates. As recently as a month ago, numerous forecasts called for 10-year treasuries to increase to 2.5% or more, while earlier in the year forecasts of 3% or more were common. Certainly, 2015 will continue to be a challenging year for forecasting interest rate movements and timing. Nevertheless, nearly everyone agrees that rates are near the bottom. By all measures, now is one of the best times to take advantage of capturing low interest rates, especially for longer-term debt. Mortgage markets clearly reflect rate euphoria for borrowers as an almost endless supply of funds flood commercial real estate markets. As expected, mortgage spreads over treasuries are under intense pressure to tighten. Given the current oversupply of capital, spreads may drop below 100 basis points for premium quality, low leverage funding opportunities. For more ordinary deals, new spread ranges will likely be 25 to 75 basis points higher. On the other hand, lenders are trying to maintain reasonable yields by instituting rate floors for longer term debt, typically 3.75% to 4%. And should treasuries remain low throughout the next few months and assuming inflation fears subside, expect the removal of rate floors. Gene Peck, the Real Estate Capital Institute's director, emphasizes that 2015 will be remembered as one of the best years for borrowers to take advantage of extremely low interest rates. Adding, if a deal does not pencil out at today's rates, then move on. February 4, 2015. Real Estate Capital Scoreboard February, 2015. Chicago, Illinois, February 2, 2015. The most recent reports on the economic outlook, including a drop in durable goods orders and lower corporate profit forecasts combined with a sluggish global economy, help keep interest rates at record low levels. Since the holidays, treasuries moved dramatically downward, more than 50 basis points for both the 5 and 10 year treasuries. Furthermore, the 50 basis point benchmark also applies to the yield curve, representing the narrowing difference between the 5 and 10 year notes. How funding sources reacting to these dramatic interest rate movements? Once again, floors are being reintroduced, generally ranging from 3% to 4% for longer term funds. And with such rates at absolute lows, lenders regularly offer interest only payments of at least a couple of years for 10 year deals with full leverage, 75% or even full-term interest only for loans of 50% or less. Some sources are loosening their prepayment standards and offering more flexibility than was available in the past. With such low overall interest rates, and continued pressure for lower spreads due to the oversupply of money, smaller lenders are rethinking their real estate lending strategies as profits become more elusive. At the same time, Larger banks and financial institutions are dealing with regulatory pressures for reserving additional funds against any real estate collateral. Expect life insurance companies and agencies to remain competitive with ample funding allocations, but less competition from smaller-scale securitized lenders. With the concern over CMBS lenders loosening their underwriting standards coupled with low rates, lenders will trade best rates for more conservative loan structure from CMBS and life co-sources. In some instances CMBS lenders are competing with life co-pricing on lower leverage deals. As higher risk capital retreats due to declining yields, borrowers will turn to lower leverage financing, being rewarded with more favorable rates. Gene Peck, of the Real Estate Capital Institute, jokes, now more than ever, predicting interest rate movements is at best a lucky guess, at worst a futile exercise, gauge your time and projections accordingly.
March 2, 2015. Real Estate Capital Scoreboard Dash March, 2015. Chicago, Illinois, March 2, 2015. February resembled an interest rate yo yo contest, rates climbed up and down, at times, spinning out of control. Lender contestants tried to stop the yo yos from hitting rate floors, while borrowers tried to quickly lock in at the bottom. No doubt, borrowers enjoy low rate euphoria as most lenders set lofty production goals for 2015. Notable market highlights are as follows Price discovery, while spreads are regularly mentioned. Floor rates are overtaking spreads as baseline pricing parameters. 10-year pricing ranges in the 3.25% to 4.25% via life companies and agencies, while conduits capture 3.75% to 4.5% for higher leverage loans. Loan underwriting is mostly driven by debt yields of 7.5% to 9%, as extremely low capitalization and interest rates distort debt coverage ratios. Ditching double digits Hitting returns in the teens remains extremely challenging. MES slash pref equity funds struggle to reach above 9% for parts of the capital stack reaching 80% LTV. High teens are targeted for JV funds up to 100% funding with a 50-50 structure or better for the developer. However, most investors want to see at least 10% equity from the sponsorship. Rubber band man, lenders stretch to make deals, including term, leverage and prepayment options. Longer-term funds of up to 40 years selectively offered by funding sources searching for more diversified debt maturities. Leverage approaching 75% to 80% by building in MES debt. Some lenders promote far more liberal prepayment schedules, even waiving prepayment penalties in the remaining two years of a 10-year loan, for example. Pricing premiums between various longer maturities rarely exceeds 25 basis points, as lenders are flush with cash. Need for speed Loans must be securitized quicker than ever. Balance sheet securitization risks based upon bond market volatility forces conduit lenders to reduce loan warehousing exposure to minimize any trading losses. Smaller CMBS shops giving way to larger players that can afford take more timing risk. Also, BP spires are punishing riskier underwriting, so expect more conservatively underwritten conduit deals to go to market sooner. April 1, 2015. Real Estate Capital Scoreboard Dash April, 2015. Chicago, Illinois, April 1, 2015. Commer market conditions keep investors and developers scrambling to find profitable opportunities within an extremely tight yield environment. Developers face rising construction costs, mainly labor and materials, while investors battle fierce competition for core slash core plus, higher quality assets. Winners include sellers and patient landowners with urban infill sites within desirable urban infill locations. Today, higher density areas drive new construction demand in many areas in central downtown districts, once considered too fringy. The real estate investment world is becoming flat as demonstrated by flat profits. Most investors are at or near the bottom of their yield thresholds for mortgage and real estate equity risk. All in rates of return hover in the middle to upper single digit range for institutional assets while second-tier properties attract double-digit money. Should yields continue on such a path, investors will look elsewhere for relative value opportunities. Flat benchmark rates, investors are jittery about the continued low interest rate environment, however, even lower moving treasuries postpone any decisions to lock into longer-term interest rates. In fact, all of the floating rate benchmark indices including Libra and Bank Prime have barely moved from record low territory during the past few years, with no bumps in sight. Flat mortgage spreads, as funding sources become more comfortable with low benchmark yields, mortgage spread premium are settling at 140 to 220 basis points. Moreover, longer term rates converge, as 10-year, 15-year and longer maturities are priced against average life treasuries based upon a relatively flat yield curve. Borrowers enjoy nearly the same rates on 10-year terms versus 20 years, for example. Flat property demand, changing consumer spending habits, more efficient manufacturing and distribution methods and shrinking needs for traditional commercial office, 
retail and industrial space contribute to a flat and shrinking supply, especially in suburban markets. The good news? Targeted new construction and retrofitted buildings meeting the technology-slash-space needs of a new breed of users are improving the supply issues on a selective basis. Flat is where it's at, comments Gene Peck of the Real Estate Capital Institute. Adding, flat, real estate investment and development characteristics create unique opportunities for those that understand how to redefine space, closely followed by capital sources. Real Estate Capital Scoreboard May, 2015 May 1, 2015 Chicago, Illinois, May 1, 2015, headline news over the past month almost exclusively focused on the agencies. As both Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae hit near their allocation ceilings causing spreads to widen by at least 50 basis points. Competitors welcome this news as banks, Wall Street and life insurance companies eagerly look to fill the gap within the multifamily sector. This changing realty capital funding landscape now has apartment debt pricing converging with other commercial properties. As multifamily spreads widened, benchmark treasury yields peaked to their highest levels since mid-March, nearly 20 basis points this week alone, as bond markets expect the Fed to raise rates later in the year. The end result generates a higher pricing range of 3.5% to 4% or more for the popular fixed rate, 10-year term. Mortgage rates are still relatively low as lenders maintain ambitious funding goals. With tighter mortgage pricing differentials, loan negotiations focus on interest only versus amortization, reduction of recourse, including carve-outs, and other less obvious underwriting factors. In addition, lenders offer more flexible prepayment provisions, in some cases even waiving prepayment penalty for half the loan term. Many lenders believe future rising rates will negate concerns for early payoffs of today's below-market rate loans. In the face of rising rates, what about locking into longer-term money at current pricing? Now more than ever, many life companies offer terms in excess of 10, 15, 20-year and longer-term at barely noticeable rate premiums making such product-slash-term combinations very attractive to long-term borrowers. 35- and 40-year money is also available through FHA-slash-HUD and expect increased leverage levels of up to 85%, as this governmental agency ramps up for more competitive lending in the multifamily arena. The Real Estate Capital Institute's director, Gene Peck, believes, real estate fundamentals are very strong in many sectors, with lenders clamoring for product. The agency's retreat is quickly filling up with alternative lender capital, but pricing is becoming more equal across various commercial property sectors. June 1, 2015. Real Estate Capital Scoreboard June, 2015. Chicago, Illinois, June 1, 2015. Good news bears stomp out bad news bulls as investors now worry about how good times keep getting better. Rates are still low, but investors grow increasingly skeptical such trends will continue, including the following. Cap rates are not capped, dipping below 5% for credit tenant properties and core assets is no longer impossible. Low mortgage ranges along with insatiable appetites for all type of cash flowing commercial real estate drive record high pricing, even above 2006 to 2007 levels. 1031 expires prevail for smaller deals, while institutional players try to expand more into urban infill assets, where product availability is scarce. Less pricing differential for primary versus secondary markets, as long as asset quality and store sales performance, for example, retail, reflect solid results. Astute owners are pruning their portfolios, mainly selling assets in smaller, less strategic markets to take advantage of current risk pricing dislocation. 
flat spreads, as commercial property markets steadily improve with the retail sector leading the way, mortgage spreads between various property types flatten out. Overall spreads start as low as 120 basis points over comparable term treasuries for low leverage loans, below 50% LTV, 150 to 170 basis points for moderate leverage, 65% LTV, and under 220 basis points for full leverage loans, 75% LTV. With rates remaining in comparatively low ranges over the past few years, more owners comfortably stay with floating rate debt. As with equity markets, little pricing differentiation for mortgage rates and primary versus secondary markets. Replacement costs count, peaking property values ignite more new construction demand, more and more, cost equals value of formulas drive investment decisions. Developers and tenants find new construction more appealing. In particular, users are driven to high-density urban areas near public transportation. Automobile parking lots are shrinking, while bicycle racks grow. Gene Peck of the Real Estate Capital Institute, suggests, the party continues as owners and sellers enjoy the best capital market ride in years. When will the music stop? No one knows for sure, but why worry, just go with the flow. July 1, 2015 Real Estate Capital Scoreboard July, 2015 Chicago, Illinois, July 1, 2015 The low rate streak may be coming to an end, but by waiting, borrowers are rewarded with low floating rates. Interest rates steadily climbed since April, fluctuating about 20 basis points and ending at nearly the same levels as a month ago. This time, the Greek financial crisis takes credit for rates steeply dropping by month's end. With mid-year funding goals and objectives on, or often ahead of, schedule, numerous balance sheet lenders, namely life insurance companies, are hitting their funding goals and objectives. Many of them cite funding targets in excess of 10% or more. These lenders are expected to widen out their pricing as well as tighten underwriting standards, as a result. Since absolute mortgage rates are at already near historical lows, motivation to invest more capital in this sector is now more tempered. The acquisition market is progressing at a healthy pace with pushes from 1031 exchange buyers and from buyers' growing perception that real estate is moving out of the alternative asset class definition. The increase in rates may somewhat interfere with the downward trend in cap rates. Balance sheet lenders are not alone, as mortgage conduits and debt funds expect to also hit post-Great Recession funding targets for the remainder of the year. While no shortage of capital exists, Securitized lenders will also widen spreads in response to life co rate increases. Borrowers will tolerate rate hikes of 10 to 50 basis points before starting to seriously reevaluating cost of capital issues as part of their investment strategies. The end result? Expect low mortgage rates for the remainder of the year, but at slightly higher spreads over treasuries. Conservative, lower leverage loans in nearly all property sectors will enjoy the strongest funding demand but secondary quality loans will still generate demand as long as cash flow prospects remain strong. What is certain is the insatiable appetite for higher quality, cash-flowing commercial real estate, suggests Gene Peck of the Real Estate Capital Institute. Borrowers are spoiled with lower cost of capital, and owners-slash-sellers with record high prices. Nothing on the horizon will change these conditions for the second half of 2015. August 3, 2015. Real Estate Capital Scoreboard August, 2015. Chicago, Illinois, August 3, 2015. To date, real estate investors enjoy low rates thanks to a global crisis merry go round with China, Ukraine, Russia, 
Greece and now Iran creating cycles of market panic and driving investors back to the safe haven of U.S. treasuries. And money never sleeps as interest rates are trending upward this year, although at a calmer pace. Benchmark yields, good news for lenders' sources, bad news for borrowers. The Fed has not raised long-term rates for nearly a decade, but the low-rate party may be about to end. In the past month, the five-year and ten-year treasuries fluctuated about a quarter point, landing towards the lower end of the range of about 1.5% and 2.2%, respectively. Current rates are in line with the end of 2014, still reasonably low in comparison to the past few years. Mortgage spreads, more good news for lenders. Permanent lenders exceed funding targets as worried borrower flock to fixed rate debt in anticipation of a Fed rate hike. Since permanent lenders are processing pent up demand, spreads are likely to rise, many funding sources choosing to provide less leverage rather than raise spreads to remain competitive. Higher quality loans garner the most attention with Lifekiss and Conduits, while more risky deals are left to public slash private debt funds, which are more prevalent. Banks rely on more on recourse but will offer highly competitive spreads for floating rate and short-term debt. Funding structures, take me to the bridge is a popular realty finance outcry, as multiple players jump into the structured finance funding spectrum. Many of today's bridge players need to supplement their MES, preferred equity and joint venture programs with a wider variety of options to catch deals earlier in the funding cycle. With barely any profits in conventional debt business based upon interest rates of 3.5% to 5%, Debt funds entertain more entrepreneurial prospects including partially leased and limited construction projects. Structures typically priced at combined rates of 5% to 7% over a 5-year or less holding period. Higher risk pricing approaches double-digit returns, often hovering below equity yields. The Real Estate Capital Institute's director, Gene Peck, predicts Fed rate hike discussions will spook owners into action, both for sale and financing. Look for busy money as the theme for this fall when investors return from summer vacations to buckle down on their capital needs. September 2, 2015 Real Estate Capital Scoreboard-September 2015 Chicago, Illinois, September 1, 2015, Realty debt markets pummeled with widening spreads as Treasuries rates rise. Conduit spreads reached a two-year high, as several mortgage pools crowd bond investors, creating temporary oversupply conditions. August was a wild roller coaster ride for lenders and borrowers alike as 10 year treasuries suddenly dipped to 2% later in the month on news of Chinese economic woes. Within days, treasuries climbed by about 20 basis points. Meanwhile, led by the agencies, many lenders steadily raised spreads by 5 basis points increments. Long term mortgage spreads are now about 20 to 50 basis points higher than earlier in the spring. Increasing spreads are likely to continue due to expected ongoing market volatility. Borrowers and lenders are planning for a rising rate tide. Domestic job growth and a continuing economic recovery clearly portend higher rates with inflationary pressure. However, as the Fed threatens to raise rates, a pattern of negative global news dampens any rate hikes. So for now, borrowers enjoy temporary relief by staying with low-cost, floating rate debt. All in all, Permanent rates for 10-year fixed-rated loans range from 3.75% to 4.75%, influenced mainly by asset quality, leverage, debt coverage and transaction size. Lenders favor more diverse property pools with wider tenancy profiles, hoping to avoid credit risk, especially for larger loans. Best rates are available for lower leveraged, stabilized deals and for multifamily projects with some level of affordability in the rent levels. Competition is fierce and runs across nearly all spectrums of lenders. CMBS lenders dominate higher leverage loans, life companies offer best pricing at leverage levels of 65% or less, agencies still win loans with repeat borrowers, while banks flirt more and more with competitive non-recourse debt. Lastly, debt funds tackle more bridge and mezzanine loans and other opportunistic funding in search of yield. Ms. Jean Peck, director of the Real Estate Capital Institute observes. Rising rates are finally upon us, 
after several false starts throughout the year. That said, flooding rates are still a bargain, but for how long is anyone's guess? October 1, 2015 Real Estate Capital Scoreboard October, 2015. Chicago, Illinois, October 1, 2015. As Fed has decided to keep rates steady again, mortgage spreads have widened by more than 15 basis points as well. However, steady rates continue drawing back more bond investors into the realty capital markets, including those seeking safe haven from global turmoil. As a rule of thumb, Shorter-term loans of five years or less hover in the three-handle mortgage rate range for leverage levels below 75%, and longer-term fixed-rate debt will start with a four-handle range, occasionally dipping into the higher 3% range for stronger credit underwriting. Floating rate debt pricing remains basically unchanged. With rates still at very competitive levels, lenders focus more on sponsorship and funding flexibility, rather than pricing for winning deals. Banks, for example, will waive recourse requirements and fix rates, in order to prevent clients from moving to conduit or life company debt. Alternatively, conduits provide higher leverage, including mes slash pref equity, and delve into tertiary markets to gain market share. Life companies offer the lowest rates and additional proceeds during the loan term to draw lower leverage, higher quality properties. Lastly, agencies provide a combination of all of the above for multifamily deals, particularly affordable housing ventures. A potential Fed rate hike is one of the hottest topics within the realty capital markets. Yet many investors and funding sources see a little change in strategic plans, should rates rise as much as a quarter point. Numerous players already believe that rates hit bottom and are now on a steady rise, although not at any dramatic levels. In other words, gradual rate increases are baked into investors' plans for the foreseeable future. Peaking values are another topic most experts discuss. While prices have reached, or exceeded, pre-recession levels, finding profitable investments at reasonable yields remains an elusive goal. Despite record pricing, investors still believe more room exists for steadily rising values. Inflation and supply-constrained markets are hampered by escalating new construction costs, making existing properties good value propositions. The Real Estate Capital Institute's Gene Daropek suggests, people are now expecting steady rate behavior, perhaps slowing down the pace of yield compression. November 2, 2015 Real Estate Capital Scoreboard – November 2015 Chicago, Illinois, November 2, 2015 Weaker job growth and lackluster retail sales reports create divergent opinions among bond investors. Many believe the Fed is less likely to push through rate increases, resulting in an inverted swap to Treasury curve. Mortgage spreads widened in recent weeks as CMBS buyers flock to higher quality offerings forcing more marginal pools to sell at wider discounts. For instance, the highest credit-rated portions of current securitized mortgage pools are more than 30 basis point wider as compared to earlier in the year. And increases of at least 10 basis points are commonplace versus earlier in the fall. However, highest quality assets still attract pricing inside of the new benchmark of 4% for 10-year funds. During October rates trended upward, with a spike at the end of the month. The five-year T-note rate ranged from 1.25% to 1.53%, the 10-year rate moved about 20 basis points, settling at a high of 2.17%. Short-term rates remained mostly unchanged. The trend continues for higher prices across the realty investment spectrum as a long-term phenomenon, so select investors refocus on using equity returns, for example, equity multiples, as key benchmarks instead of a heavier reliance on discounted cash flow modeling.
such investors often believe that cash flow growth will be more lackluster than previously projected, expecting flatter annual returns. That said, buyers often absorb lower returns based upon relatively low mortgage rates. The correlation between higher mortgage rates and capitalization rates has about 100 basis points of capitalization rate shimmy. The Real Estate Capital Institute's Gene Darrow Peck suggests, glamorous profits and stellar returns in both the debt and equity markets are today more distant than any time since the Great Recession. Expect more gradual returns rather than any quick flip plays, as investors on all sides of the table use better market information than ever before. December 1, 2015 Real Estate Capital Scoreboard Dash December, 2015 Chicago, Illinois, December 1, 2015 The Fed is clearly preparing bond markets for the first rate hike in nearly a decade. Investors react by pricing 2- and 10-year benchmark treasuries to the thinnest margin since this spring. With the market psychologically factoring such increases, longer-term bond investments, including mortgages, will benefit from a slow predictable pace of increases mainly based upon tame inflation news. Even as longer-term benchmark rates gain more predictability, mortgage market players react differently to pricing realty risk premiums over these yields. Major players carve out niches as follows. Life companies, without question, these balance sheet funding sources win battles on rate, less so on leverage. Fixed rate loans can be had starting in the higher 3% range. Virtually all players in this sector have targeted appetites well above the amount of deal volume, as investment departments shift more dollars into commercial realty debt instead of corporate bonds. Conduits, relentless volatility hampers Wall Street from providing consistent pricing as triple underscore A pieces of the loan continue to widen to their highest levels in the year. PPB piece price widening shows no mercy on the other end of the pricing spectrum. In fear of wiping out profitability due to mismatched pricing during loan aggregation, Wall Street sources wait to the last minute to finalize loans. Expect more credit discipline and conservative underwriting than in the recent past, but higher leverage levels than life companies with pricing typically starting in the mid-4% range. Agencies, despite wider pricing in recent months, agencies lead in higher leverage multifamily lending. Agencies have a generous allocation of funds for the foreseeable future. Execution consistency and continuous market presence remain the largest reasons for the continued success of this funding sector. Banks, local and regional banks fill any liquidity gaps for borrowers in non-core markets. Flexibility, especially for shorter-term debt, is the hallmark funding characteristic of banks. Pricing tends to fall somewhere between life companies and conduits. Ms. Jean Peck of the Real Estate Capital Institute's Jean Darrow Peck advises. Keep in mind rates are still relatively low, even as spreads widen. She adds, the planned Fed actions reflect a vote of confidence in the economy, and resulting mortgage rate impacts should be gradual and work within project budgeting goals and objectives.